Let's take a look now at the markets picture on the East Coast in Nairobi specifically where we had Kenyan shares only just managing to halt a five session retreat yesterday as stocks received support from bargain hunters. We had the benchmark index inching up 0.1% by the close of the session to finish at 4,502 points, uh, just about 505 points rather. So the data uh, being reflected on screen incorrect at this stage of the game. Of course, what we are looking at there as well is uh, data on a one month basis. So we're looking at a cumulative performance being put on by that market. Of course, this way the index had lost about 4% since February the 14th as investors rattled by lower than expected full year results triggered a sell-off. Now traders saying stocks seem to be gaining some support on favorable prices. We had East African breweries, one of those companies standing out yesterday, the most capitalized stock on the Nairobi bourse, rising for the first time since it posted a drop in its half-year pre-tax profit last Friday. It closed 1.8% higher at 276 seven shillings a share. All of that, of course, while the shilling held steady against the dollar in a pretty cautious market. Traders saying that they expect the local currency to remain range-bound ahead of the national elections on March the 4th. And we have the unit coming into this morning stable at 87.60. The shilling has weakened 1.6% against the dollar so far in 2013, with importers amassing dollars ahead of that tight election race in East Africa's biggest economy. Let's get straight into some analysis now. And joining us for that is Reginald Kadzutu, who's an independent analyst. Reginald, thanks so much for joining us this morning. While we're seeing some easing of the sell-off that the market's experienced over the past week, but uh, still it seems a lot of caution in the air. What do you make of market sentiment right now? Um, I, I guess what we're basically seeing right now is what... Um, what the Nairobi Stock Exchange, the rationalism sometimes that is in the investors that actually invest in the Nairobi Stock Exchange and, and, and the analysis gap that is in the market, um, that information actually doesn't reach to the investors and the people that buy shares. And people look at the surface and assume that because the year was kind of good, uh, because interest rates were high, banks are going to do well, these companies are going to do well. And people don't take into cognizance the total sum of the information that is on the ground. So you find people went into the market with expectations that they are going to reap a harvest before the elections, um, pull out before the elections, then buy back. Most probably, if um, prices drop after elections, then um, move in again. But that's that's the, that's the tricky bit of the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Information is not that abundant, and the quality sometimes is not good enough to to make an informed decision. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we've certainly seen how expectations have been shot uh, with the releasing of the banking uh, results uh, so far. We've had uh, uh, the banking sector really coming under pressure, and as a result, as you say, of that expectation bar being set at a certain level and earnings coming in at another. To what extent? Has the banking earnings season been a disappointment for you? Um, if, 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 if you? If you look at it, um, if you look throughout the, the year, banks don't create money to, to lend out money. They get money and lend it out. So as much as interest rates are high, their financing costs also become high. Mm. If a bank is actually not well capitalized and they're relying on, on, on deposits from institutions and recycling that, those deposits. But that's how basically the mechanism of a bank works. Uh, you get a cheaper deposit here and you lend it out higher. But the, the rates were kept to around 21, 22% last year. So in, in my own opinion, I was not expecting um, a, a extraordinary results from the banking sector. I knew the results would be good, would be in double digits, but not really expecting the 30, 40 percent that we've been seeing in the previous years where interest rates actually have been lower. Um, but, but if you just look at the structure, my, my main fear with the banking sector in Kenya right now is that for most of the banks that have announced their results, their non-funded income actually reduced. And you normally want to see an unfunded income actually growing better than funded income because it's more stable, it's, it's not volatile, it's not dependent on interest rates. So that's where my main worry has come in with the results that have come in so far. Mm -hmm. Talking about banks, Equity Bank and Cooperative Bank have been standing in the spotlight and that as they've been highlighted as the two players in the market that have uh, really managed to rein in control of uh, diaspora remittances into the country. What do you make of the kind of stride they're making in terms of capturing that segment of the market and that uh, that business? I, I guess it goes down to your customer base, your, your customer structure. 
I'll, I'll give you an example of if you look at equity and cooperative bank and you look at their type of clientele and the huge chunk of their clientele, close to 80-90% of their clientele, are the people that actually receive this money from the diaspora. Um, it was, they, they've gone to the bottom of the so-called bottom of the pyra pyramid where these are people who are actually dependent on remittances to meet their day-to-day -day needs. So naturally, because of their client structure, they will obviously get more of the funds channeled through them, vis-a-vis uh, -vis maybe a bank like Standard Chartered, who have gone for more of the middle to upper class, who are not really dependent on remittances from abroad. So you find there, there's not much funds that are being channeled through them because the recipients are lying with equity or cooperative bank. So it would be easier for money transfer companies to partner with these guys where the, mm -hmm. who are actually, at the end of the day, the main recipients of the funds. So that is what has actually benefited them, and just their client structure is what is working well for them. Certainly opening up a new revenue stream that uh, helps propel the growth of their deposits and their transaction incomes as well. Still in the financial arena, Pan-African Insurance, it surged close enough to 4.5% in yesterday's session, and that after the company released its full-year results. Uh, many saying uh, the surge can be attributed to that dividend declaration of uh, 3 shillings with investors looking to buy the stock before a book closure. Reginald, how, how much of an incentive has that dividend payout to put on the table for you? I guess for guys who are hungry for income and trying to make sure that you reap as much as you can because you don't know how the year is going to be, um, the, the economic fundamentals, okay, the economy is basically built on very thin ice because of the debt and um, of the huge current um, account deficit. So any opportunity someone gets to get some um, uh, return from it was three, three shillings at a price of 57, it's, it's a good dividend yield. But the company itself, also if you look at their results, um, their main core business, uh, yes, grew by 49%, but their uh, liabilities or their claims on the written premiums grew by close to 300%. So their profit this time around was actually purely from the, the, the fair gain uh, revaluations that they got from their investments in the Nairobi Stock Exchange and in the bond market, which is not a sustainable form of income for someone to actually invest or in them for a long run. So it's just that basically people who've just seen the three shillings and decided to go for it. Mm -hmm. On uh, another note, Kenya uh, electricity generating company, Kenchen, has announced plans to raise 30 billion uh, shillings through a 20-year bond. Take us through market reaction to that announcement because, of course, the capital being raised so that the company can finance its geothermal power production moving forward. Kenchen is a good... Um, Creditor is a good um, person to, to, to lend your money to. They, they are kind of a monopoly. They do have competition, but they have state backing and they have the resources to be able to, 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 to beat off competition. And the money will actually be used for good use. The, the only worry will be what pricing are they going to put on that piece of paper. If, if you look at um, the way that the debt structure of the country, we expect interest rates to go up in the long run than to come down. So what they're going to bring to the market has to reflect that perception that the country is so indebted, um, everyone who's coming in to the presidential race has spending plans, and none of them actually have any cutting plans. So that means there'll be more borrowing going forward. So what will determine the success of this paper will be basically how they view the perception of interest rates going forward and what they will offer the market. At 11 shillings, 60, Reginald, would you be a buyer? Yes. <laughs> Simple as that. Let's leave it there. Thanks so much, Reginald, uh, for joining us this morning. Re Reginald Kadzutu is an independent analyst, of course, joining us from our studios in Nairobi, Kenya, with the latest analysis on the Kenyan market.